happy Hanukkah. It's the first day of an eight day feast. Um, all, or both of, not all, both of the major festivals in the Bible, Passover, um, plus unleavened bread equals eight days, and also the Feast of Tabernacles equals eight days. Then you have the last great day, which is the eighth day, when Yeshua would have been circumcised. You know, most uh, real Christians believe that Yeshua was born on the the first day of the Feast of Sukkot. Um, this is around the time he turned the age uh, 33, I believe it was. Or was it age 30? I think it was age 30. Um, when he opened his account um, and read from the book of Isaiah in the synagogue on Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is just about a few days before, about a uh, four or five days before the beginning of the Feast of Sukkot, which is also referred to as the Feast of Tabernacles, but we are starting um, the unofficial eighth Jewish festival, or even you might call it biblical festival, because it is in the Bible, and I will explain that. I made a few videos before about John 10, and if you read uh, John chapter 10 verses 22 and 23 you'll find out that that entire chapter is Yeshua speaking to the Jewish people speaking to the Pharisees and telling them he is indeed the light of the world now as I'm holding in my hands this is a literal translation by Jay Green I managed to get hold of a few copies and you see uh, you can easily use it for some uh, weight exercises. I think uh, I won't go as far as to use it for step aerobics, but um, this is a proper Bible, my friends. I think the devil is quaking in his boots looking at this. Truly, truly quaking in his boots. Um, take your little girly Bible, whatever you think the, the correct version is, or you, your little satanic NIV, carry it around like this. No, this is the word of God. I think Satan would run a mile if he sees me with this thing right now. So, um, in fact, let's just take the opportunity to pray. The opportunity to pray uh, to the Lord and just ask him to bind up every demonic spirit in your life. Command every demon um, to leave the abode which you're dwelling in the name of Jesus Christ. You can pray in the name of Yeshua if you really want to. If you feel in the spirit, in the festival of the feast, Yeshua being the fulfillment of the Jewish festivals, um, which you might also call biblical festivals. And this is the great confusion within Christianity today. Do we as Christians keep the Jewish festivals? Are we Because we're not Jewish, we're Christians, right? Well, the Apostle Paul, many, many times, he says that let's keep... The feast, and he was talking about Passover, um, with um, unleavened bread. Well, he's talking about the feast of unleavened bread. I'll get the quote for that scripture. Uh, I'll mark it down probably in the toolbar for that particular one. But, but I recall he wrote a scripture about let us not keep uh, the feast in any bitterness or against any Gentile or Jews. But let's keep, keep the feast, you know, Jew and Gentile, one and Messiah. Understand what these festivals represent. It's not just uh, the redemption of the Jews in Israel. It's a redemption of humanity. But for, for want of a better word, we are men and women created in the image of God. I know we have to use the words that we're given, that we're taught uh, to us. I, I do try to explain th the true meaning of these words. We get caught up. Actually, using um, legalese terms, and uh, this is why you know the crown is getting such um, making merchandise out, out of us all because uh, you know they are keeping 
keeping justice from us. Um, I believe out of all the festivals in the Bible, you've got to say Passover is about justice because the, the, the Egyptians were oppressing God's people. Uh, as you might read in, um, I think it's the book of Ruth, is that correct? The book of, no, it's Esther, the book of Esther, where sometimes the Jews, ha, ha, you know, celebrate. They have a festival in about the 11th or 12th Jewish month um, about the, the fact that a certain king um, wanted to kill all the Jews and then God used Esther um, to, to gain favour for the Jews and they indeed went ahead and they killed uh, those who uh, wanted to see them dead so it was either the Jews that were going to be dead or it was, or it was those who wanted the Jews to be dead and God gave them favour so that it was those who persecuted and cursed the Jews, they themselves were cursed um, you've got to remember that the Messiah came from from the Jews. Um, people talk about, you know, there's a lot of wickedness through certain factions of the Jewish people. We've got to understand what the Word of God says about this. Uh, the, the Jewish people re are referred to as a fig tree. Now, when Jesus cursed the fig tree, I don't believe he was cursing all of the Jewish people. Um, but only those Jews who were um, doing wickedness. Um, God has the, the power to curse and to bless. And God also has the power to break curses as well on your life. And so if you're Jewish watching this video, understand that your salvation is through the Jewish Messiah and he can break all curses that's on your life. All demonic hosts that are trying to uh, cause you trouble and so on. And sometimes it's very hard to define why we as believers sometimes sometimes we think oh curses can come upon us curses come up, um, come upon believers if we disobey God's word and, and I believe that uh, that's a universal thing that's, that's the same for all believers if you become born again you accept the Jewish Messiah uh, you go to a church which is teaching um, it could be greasy grace it could be hyper grace it could be um, uh, you know, teaching to get circumcised in order to get saved. Well, they're Judaizers, but most of them, even the Messianics, don't really preach that because they know that the, the New Testament really condemns that. It is a choice that you have, but you do not need to be circumcised. You don't need to wear to fill them, to zit you, you do not need to do any of that external part of the law or certainly do any sacrifices unto the Lord because all that has been fulfilled um, through Yeshua the Messiah. All we need to give up is the, as it were, the sacrifice of praise. We have, we have prayer as a way of communicating with, with our God and um, also as a weapon as well. You know, the, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they are spiritual to bring down um, principalities and powers in high places. Um, and so, you, you got you got to try and put all this together if you're born again, if you're a believer, a Gentile, a Jew. You got to try and put all this together and say, I want to be one new man and Messiah. If I am to observe any festivals, I'm going to ask the Lord if I should observe Passover in, in a righteous fashion. I know that um, certain Christian denominations have have done that in the past. I know it's not popular within the Catholic religion because they've got their own festivals which they united the paganism and the biblical festivals together. I know it's not popular with Catholics even though Catholics really try to be all things to all men but, but they do get mixed up in a lot of paganism unfortunately um, and it's about time they just realise that these festivals are not biblical it's a very confusing religion, Catholicism. Get back to the Word of God. Get yourself a Textus Receptus um, by Bible which has been translated from that text. This is a KJ3 literal translation. One of the best word-for-word -word Bible translations out there. Um, it does also replace the capital letter L-O-R-D with the English 
translation of the name of God, which is Iova in the, in the Greek. No Jai in the Hebrew, no Jai in the Greek. But um, if you want the Hebrew name of God, it's uh, the Yod Heh Vav Heh. Uh, most most born again believers um, can establish that as truth. Romans 3.31, we establish truth through faith in the Messiah Yeshua. So I believe that's a, a very much established truth that the name of God is the Yod Heh Vav Heh, is Yahweh. Um, hallelujah. And so, the seven fe biblical festivals, you'll probably find them in Leviticus 23. Um, we have Passover. We have first fruits. Sorry, we have Passover. Yes, we have first fruits. We have unleavened bread. We have the Feast of Pentecost. We have uh, the Feast of Trumpets, Yom Terah. We have Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. And we have the, the Feast of Sukkot or the Feast of Tabernacles. These are the seven Jewish festivals and um, they're referred to as Sabbaths. It's a plural word. On each of these festivals there are rest days and there are work days on some occasion but normally on the first day of each feast is a rest day and sometimes on the last day is also a rest day as well. Um, a Sabbath means to rest from your world worldly labors. Um, some versions talk about your servile work. Servile work is what human beings do and work of God is things that God does every day. Jesus Christ or Yeshua reminded us that his Father is at work every day. Like the works of God are different from the works of men. Um, God is at work every single day. Um, as he said to the Pharisees, you know, if you lose a sheep on the Sabbath, isn't it good that you go and look for that sheep and, and find it, you know, because they were unable to separate <clears throat> what was defined as servile work and spiritual work of God. And of course, Jesus may well have been referring to an actual sheep, you know, which a shepherd has lost. But on the other hand, he's probably referring to... Um, the lost souls which he was ministering to on Sabbath days, which uh, we know that, uh, you know, the Jesus said, I came not but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he's not talking about literal sheep. He's not talking about, you know, that he, he he's a shepherd in, in the field somewhere like David was. But what he's saying is he is the, the shepherd of Israel, that he's the one who seeks out and finds the lost souls who are in darkness. And the, and the Feast of Dedication represents light. Jesus is the light of the world. And also in the book of Revelation it talks about the two witnesses. The, these are the two candlesticks that are before the throne of God. And so it's very much talking about, I, I would suggest Judah and Israel. Or it could be Israel and the Gentiles, whichever way you look at it. Because... The lost tribes of Israel are counted as Gentiles because God divorced them. God divorced Israel. So they're very much counted as Gentiles, just the same as the other nations. Not until we come into a, a born-again relationship with Yeshua are we counted again as spiritual Jews. No, we're not from the actual lineage in the tribe of Judah, but we're spiritual Jews, as, as the New Testament teaches. And it's our obligation to uh, love our brothers, the carnal Jews, wh whichever, whoever they claim to be, you know, if they claim to be um, from the tribe of Judah who stay in Israel, they claim to be from the tribe of Judah and they're black Israelites, I think we should also love them as well and explain to them, we as believers, we as born again believers in Yeshua the Messiah, um, are in the covenant, very much in the covenant. And what does the covenant mean? It means that we stay in a, a working relationship with our master, Yeshua. This shirt is one of the oldest shirts of, I've got. It says easy on it, that's the maker of this shirt. And I'm very much reminded by a brother a few weeks ago about the scripture that Yeshua says, um, come to me, uh, as Yeshua says, come to me for my burden is light. My burden is easy, you know, and uh, 
that's who Yeshua is when we make a covenant with him we follow him but these festivals which are outside the Bible are not of God you, you, you got to understand that they're not of God the festivals that most of the churches out there are observing are festivals of, of the harlot and the mother of harlots which uh, is not in a covenant relationship with the one true God because it spoiled itself through paganism and uh, through disobedience and they're bringing curses upon themselves and I believe that very soon that Yahweh is going to judge um, the harlot church as it says in Revelation 17 it also talks about the judgment of Babylon in Revelation 18 which I think that the harlot and Babylon are two different entities you know Babylon talking about a nation the spiritual Babylon and there's the harlot which is very much the Vatican very much um, the Vatican be because why is it the Vatican because you know it claims to be the head of the one world religion that's why um, because there's many pagan religions in the world very many pagan religions in the world and the Vatican claims to be the head of all the religious activities since about the 1980s they're the head of the one world religious movement as they all been meeting every single year for about the past 30 or 40 years and if you don't know this and you're a Catholic where have you been? I mean check all this stuff out read about it don't you understand that uh, the present Pope, um, Pope Francis, has actually said that uh, he wants to change the Bible. He also says that um, you can be saved without knowing Jesus Christ. You can go to heaven without knowing Jesus Christ, which is a, di a direct contradiction of what Jesus himself preached. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. So what he's saying is that you cannot get salvation but through him, the Son of God. And that's just, this is the very reason that God sent his Son. And we must recognize this. Again, Catholicism is a very mixed up religion. There's a lot of Catholics who think they're Christians. But there's a lot in Catholicism which, are not, which is not biblical. And at the same time, we get mixed up with the fact that if we observe a Jewish festival, does that make us carnal Jews? Absolutely not. If, if you're born again in Jesus Christ and you, you, you decide to um, buy a menorah and light it, doesn't make you doesn't make you a Jew. You know, a rabbi will tell you that. You're not Jewish um, if, you, if you decide to follow the biblical festivals. But what you are doing is sharing um, the fulfillment of these festivals with both Jew and Gentile alike. Because a lot of Jewish people struggle to understand Christianity, struggle to understand what gospel is being preached and why the majority of Christians are following pagan festivals and they, they clearly are pagan festivals so you need to pray for five minutes do some research, type Easter or Ishtar into a search engine history of Christ Mass you will see that even the church um, 100, 150 years ago the the Protestant church in, in Britain and other nations condemned Christ Mass and Easter and Halloween and all the, the Catholic festivals because they're not biblical. It's true. Um, all you need to do is check it out. Um, so that's all I can really say, man. Keep faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't mix your faith um, or mix your religion with any other gods because that is, that is called sin. And that could be seen as breaking covenant with the living God. And it's a very serious thing. Keep in covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're not sure about biblical festivals, um, a lot of Christians decide not to observe any. Not to observe any. Which I believe, uh, which I believe the Jehovah Witnesses um, believe that. You know, that they, they choose not to observe any festivals whatsoever because they're sort of come out, of, they want to come out of Catholicism but at the same time they use, you know, their New World Translation is from the text this Vaticanus so, so again um, you know, I wish, I wish I could say there was a pure religion out there but there, there just isn't um, four things you, you really need to know to, to be saved 
the Lord Jesus Christ died for your sin, the blood of Jesus. You need to know that the name of Jesus Christ is powerful and to invite him into your life as your Lord and Savior. Get into the spirit of the Jewish festivals. His name is Yeshua, that's his true name. You also need to understand um, about obedience as well. Obedience to the Word of God. That Jesus Christ is the Word of God. But a lot of Bible versions contradict what Jesus said and actually take out and delete verses and change words. So it's why it's very important to get a good version of the text, this Receptus, which is the Word of God. And also it says that every good gift comes from the Father of Lights who is above. It says this in the New Testament, the Father of Lights, the Feast of Lights, Hanukkah. Um, and so this is, you know, who this imposter is, this Saint Nicholas, arguably if he was a saint or not. But uh, why do they call him Santa Claus? Anagram of Satan and Claus. Why, why do they call him that? It's very, very confusing, very confusing religion, Catholicism. And he tries to take the place of the Father of lights in heaven who bestows unto you every good gift. If you lack faith, ask God and he will give you faith. If you lack wisdom, ask God, he will give you wisdom. This is what the Bible says. Paganism says if you're good, um, a man with a white beard might come down your chimney and give you a, a cookie or something, a present. Or you've got to leave a cookie for him. It's very confusing. Come out of paganism. Stop lying to your children. Um, teach them the truth. Teach them that, that God loves them. Teach them that Yeshua, Jesus Christ, loves them. And um, to pray to him alone. Not to pray to the saints. Not to pray to Jesus' mother. Not to pray to his, any of his brothers uh, who were apostles. Don't pray to the apostles. The apostles preach that Jesus is God's Messiah. The salvation only in Yeshua, Hamashiach, in Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. Which means that you only pray to the Father, to the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the King of heaven and earth, the creator of the universe. You address him in his son's holy name. Knowing that he is the Messiah. He's the lamb who is sacrificed for your sin. Passover lamb. And he's the lion who will come back um, for his saints in the last days. There will be a rapture at some point in, in the future history. You know, what we've had in recent days is Donald Trump um, basically saying he's going to move embassies from, I think, Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. I think most of them are in Tel Aviv. So including the American Embassy and a lot of other nations, not the British, I don't believe. I don't believe the British are getting on board with this, but it's a few other nations that are taking Donald Trump's lead. Um, I don't see it as such a big deal, but of course uh, the rest of the world does. And I believe this will lead, all of this is leading to war. You know, we can read about Zechariah 14, if you want to read that, but, you know, let's just pray for the Jewish people about accepting their Messiah, because all things happen, of, you know, for the good of those who, who love um, the Lord, the, the King of Kings, Yahweh. All things work to the good of those who love the Creator, God. And at some point, many of the Jews, I believe, will be given revelation about Yeshua, and will come to the knowledge of Yeshua. It's very sad that we've lost them um, some talented, uh, a talented musician, Avi Cohen, the past month. Couldn't really believe it myself when I heard the news. Um, but, uh, you know, he, he left some wonderful music for the Saints, and wouldn't it be great if we could distribute a lot of that music out there? You know, Avi had, um, was, was really going through a sort of a, a trial of faith in, in his last few years in his life. Um, I, I communicated with him by email after he was saved. I never actually really spoke to him um, face to face or directly, but I communicated to him through email. For uh, I, I took uh, copies of, of his uh, CD out to certain churches, and the Jews in these churches um, 
did not react well to, to the message and uh, that was pretty shocking to me um, seeing that you know Jews who are meant to be Christians really rejected the message because Aviad was standing up for the Jewish Messiah and he wasn't um, or sorry he was condoning uh, these false pagan festivals he, he did that I know he did that right up until the day he died and I really pray that um, his crown of life that he received the crown of life from from our Messiah Yeshua um, you know um, I, I was actually led to pray for him a few days before he apparently died and I know a few believers were actually led in prayer for Aviad um, around the time of his death so it might be that um, that the Lord truly saved him, his soul, and uh, and we just thank thank the Lord for that. You know, for coming into Aviad's life, speaking to him to make music. He obeyed the Lord. He came through terrible tri trials and persecution from his own people, his own family, and um, I, I, you know, I, I think he's I think he's in heaven now with with, with our Lord and Savior Yeshua. So rejoicing and uh, probably dancing to all the the, the songs of heaven. Probably, probably having the time of his life, but you know. So let's pray for his family. Let's pray for his family, and um, let's try and leave something. As I say, we, we we never know when our time is going to be, but always I think we should be, um, you know, walking with our Lord and Savior Yeshua, the Messiah, and allowing Him to lead us when it might seem not the logical thing to do. You know, maybe God might be asking us to give up work and um, to give up certain things of the world, hobbies, in order to serve Him more. And uh, uh, I've got a testimony like that as well. I used to play golf a lot. I was a rookie of the year. I was a very good golfer, and I used to play soccer, football a lot. I could, probably could have been a professional, but I decided quite early on to, to give up all that. And anyway, big long testimony, but. I'm just thankful that the past few years in my life has been more fruit um, that I know that the Lord want, has been desiring in my life and I just thank the Lord for that so much and um, I hope it's the case with you as well. It takes time for for these things to happen um, in our lives so we just have to be patient. Patience is a virtue. Going out preaching this week, you know, speaking to a guy who became a born again four years ago and he's already lost faith out there smoking and drinking and he, you know he says when is Jesus coming back I'm tired of waiting only a Christian four years ago so you know I've been a Christian for over 20 years born again for over 20 years so uh, believe me I've heard every other year this is the time of the rapture and blah 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 these people have no revelation about the Lord Jesus Christ these people um, don't follow them uh, I'm not saying that they can't quote from the Word of God and this book is to correct us, to edify us, to teach us, to encourage us, um, and so on. This is for salvation, as the Apostle Paul says. Um, Jesus Christ, um, all, all, all this entire book leads to one man, and that is Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And so I think I've just about said enough in this video, so I wish you a happy Hanukkah. Please give up any pagan festivals which uh, represent other gods because it's not in the covenant with your Messiah. Thank you for listening.